uh, a real pleasure. I'm uh, excited uh, about your comments, and I hope that you'll make them. Uh, maybe at the end, since I'm going to sort of rush through this, I've got 65 slides, uh, but I'm not going to make you look at most of them for very long at a time. My plan is to uh, spend just a little bit of time on historical ecology, maybe five minutes or so, eight minutes, uh, so that those of you not as familiar with it uh, can get the general idea. And then I'm going to launch into the research that we've been in, doing in Burgundy for uh, more decades than I care to divulge. But uh, I think once you see a little bit about the project, uh, you'll understand why it's taken us so long. First of all, um, I would like to uh, say that I have a debt of gratitude to um, Aldo Leopold and his book, A Sand County Almanac, which I read many years ago. And uh, if you just look at this uh, excerpt from A Sand County Almanac, I think what you'll see is that it is making many of the same arguments that uh, the new IG IGBP Ames initiative, uh, which is called IHOPE, uh, which is a, uh, an attempt to integrate both Earth system history with human history, uh, has resonance back uh, at least as far as Leopold. And uh, I think that probably Sverker Sorlin could come up with some examples from uh, much earlier. The important point of this is that uh, what we are looking for in Burgundy is a land ethic that uh, is not so much um, in the hands of uh, professionals or philosophers or elites, uh, but is nonetheless taught and is passed down from generation to generation and is related to the, uh, the very real conditions that uh, both limit and offer possibilities uh, to people in managing uh, landscapes. The context uh, of my work uh, to date has been something that I read when I was in high school, uh, which was C.P. Snow's Two Cultures. Uh, a few of you may uh, know this. Now, in some ways dated, but in other ways, unfortunately, not dated, uh, argument that the biophysical sciences and um, on the one hand, and the social sciences and humanities on the other seem to uh, talk uh, past one another and not very effectively across uh, a gulf that exists between them. Uh, to a certain extent, the gulf is a 20th century phenomenon. And in the 21st century now, what we're trying to do is to fill it in with big boulders and lots of sand and dirt and anything else we can throw in and come up some way uh, to uh, really uh, deal uh, with the problems that are facing us at, uh, at the planetary scale and which require uh, both of those sets of expertise. Um, it's clear that we do need some kind of an overarching theoretical and methodological approach, what that might be. Uh, this is simply uh, one version of that. But uh, historical ecology does have some things uh, that I would like to at least, at least mention that could recommend it. First of all, it's holistic and practical. Uh, it takes in a lot of time and space. We're not uh, afraid of both short-term history and deep history. Uh, and we're not afraid of realizing that some kinds of things are better studied at local scales or regional scales or continental scales than others. Uh, the term is one that uh, we coined with the idea that uh, it would make both ecology and history sit up and take notice. Uh, ecology, uh, because humans have not uh, traditionally been considered part uh, of ecosystems and uh, ecologists uh, rarely know very much uh, about how human activity is involved and oftentimes wish that it weren't uh, producing uh, reserves where people are not supposed to be a part of the whole thing. But history needs uh, a little bit of refurbishing, too, in the sense that Earth system history is going to be equally important to the study, uh, as well as 
uh, the social and uh, biophysical part uh, that is the past of our own species. Uh, historical ecology draws on a broad spectrum of evidence, both biological and the physical sciences, also ecology and the social sciences and the humanities. Uh, we have uh, very much defended the possibilities of um, researchers to uh, continue to follow the protocols in their own research areas and uh, to work up a scheme for negotiation on how those researchers would work with, uh, with others. And this builds consensus among uh, collaborators. Uh, we seek a kind of an interdisciplinary approach rather than just sort of plastering together a, a bunch of different disciplines and uh, calling that a research result. And also uh, including uh, the larger public, not just academics. One of the things that I, I would like to say about this kind of collaborative research is it has to begin with the research design. It can't begin later on in the process, that it's really important that everyone uh, bring their expertise and their understandings to the table. Uh, another characteristic of historical ecology is that uh, we believe that uh, traditional environmental knowledge is science and uh, that it needs to be integrated into the scientific framework in a very real way. We uh, assume uh, that landscapes um, uh, result from a whole bunch of different factors uh, operating uh, over a long, long periods of time. Uh, we use landscape uh, as the unit of analysis, uh, not only because it is widely used already in a lot of different disciplines, uh, but uh, also it seems to be at a human scale. And so that makes it uh, a powerful platform uh, for integrating everything from um, uh, glo global scale climate change uh, down to, through uh, microscopic analyses that are going to be important as well. And uh, also it reminds us that landscapes are uh, mosaics and not nest nested in hierarchical structures. We tend to think of hierarchies all the time in terms of the way that we pursue scale. But actually, uh, cross-scale issues are a lot uh, more important, particularly if we think about all of this work in a complex systems uh, context. And there's also a lot of room for politics. Uh, landscape history is, uh, to my way of thinking, uh, kind of a congealed politics that can be unpacked uh, uh, by looking, uh, by following the trail, if you will, uh, of the struggle over resources. When uh, we think about uh, modeling a coupled uh, Earth-human system, there are certain kinds of things that I think we have to remember. Uh, and this is a challenge, I think, to the research that uh, the IHOPE and uh, other integrative communities are facing. First of all, uh, there are cultural models. And Leopold's land ethics uh, is a, an idea, a, a, a kind of a way of thinking about people's views of the world, views of nature, views of their work uh, in society. And um, they are based on uh, empirical analysis. People who, um, who plant things and watch them grow and harvest them over the seasons and the years learn uh, empirical lessons that uh, can be applied uh, in practical ways and are uh, in many ways as valid as any other kinds of models. Now, the other sorts of models, the bigger uh, class of models, uh, would be ones that test assumptions about system drivers. And uh, that's done by changing parameters. And uh, they offer relatively simple ways to describe really complex systems. And uh, this